Good afternoon, Mr. James Miller. Welcome to the American International University. It's such an honor to have you here and a pleasure to have this chance to interview you. I'd love to ask you a few questions. First question, so you know how everyone has this one person in their life that motivates them, inspires them. Who was that person to you or who were those people to you? All right, well, first of all, thank you very much for, for hosting us. It's been a wonderful opportunity here at American International University. Um, we've enjoyed our our talks and our interactions with the students quite a bit. Um, the answer I'm going to give is probably one that many people give, and that's a parent, right? So uh, in my case, my father was a construction worker, and he worked very hard. And one of the things that he did was he taught me hard work by bringing me to the job site. And swing, yes. <laughs> So swinging a hammer all day uh, will teach you that uh, if you do not go to school, you will continue to do that over and over again. So um, that was a good, very good lesson. That was a good motivator. It, it did get me into college. <laughs> and um, following that, of course, in college, I had some very, very good mentors. And so um, one of them was a uh, former Air Force pilot and he told me about GPS and GPS was new to me and so it actually started a career uh, that I've been now working for 25 years so I cannot forget you know once you're out of school the um, the wonderful mentors that you get along with. okay in your years working with NASA what was the most memorable moment you've had so I've been at NASA for 17 years um, that that question could have a lot of answers, but I think one particular event that really sticks in my mind is we worked for seven years to secure approval to put a payload on GPS. And again, I just mentioned GPS. Everyone's familiar with it. They have it in their cars and in their phones. Uh, but at NASA, we actually put it on spacecraft. And so GPS also does a lot of things for space operations and science. And so we wanted to put laser retroflectors or basically mirrors on the GPS satellite. And by doing this, we can basically measure how accurate the radio signals are because you have a laser, you have your radiometric data, you're processing, you can compare. And over time, you can improve the reference frame that GPS operates on. And so it was very hard uh, to get to a yes. Um, seven years of work and the feeling of elation when we did get to, to yes is, is wonderful. Um, that will now be on board the first GPS satellite of the newest block. It's called GPS 3F or follow on, and that's to be launched in the coming year. So it's exciting. Something to look forward yes, to. Yes, yes. When it takes seven years to do something. Definitely. <laughs> but you get it done, um, that is a teachable moment. Okay, with all the knowledge that you have about NASA, how far beyond our solar system do you think we will reach in the next 50 years? So 50 years. So 50 years is, is an interesting number because that's about how, far, how long it's been since man last stepped on the moon, right? So you can answer that question in a variety of ways. Um, when we look at human spaceflight, most likely we will be lucky to have some habitation on Mars. Um, we know the 20s and the 30s will be basically colonizing the moon. And then that is a stepping stone to Mars. And so realistically speaking, learning how the technology works and how to safely operate and, and maintain lives, um, you know, I would say Mars. Now, if you look at it another way, um, people will remember Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. So they were launched 1977, 45 plus years later, we're billions of miles out and we're actually past the solar system. And so how far out will mankind go? So if you talk about a man-made object or a satellite, you know, that really has the record at, at billions of miles and will continue to go. It's, it's outside of the the influence of the sun, so it's an interstellar space. And so that will, that will always be a question in my mind, you know, how far, how far did those probes make it? 
And then a last way to look at it is, of course, with our newest technology, James Webb Space Telescope, right? Looking back, you know, 13.5 plus billion years ago and really understanding how, how the universe was formed with the Big Bang. So in 50 years, I, I think our knowledge base will grow quite a bit. What is the most important lesson that you've learned that you could pass down to like the younger generation? First of all, you're in the job because it's a challenge and you have a passion for it. And you're, you have a responsibility, right? You have a responsibility to your agency and, and to the nation um, that you are entrusted when you have a, a position like that. Um, but what I found is uh, the most important thing is not necessarily those idealistic themes, but more the actual people. If you build proper relationships, um, your career and your professional life merge with your personal life and it just becomes an amazing opportunity, right? It's a lifelong journey. And so you want to be able to, to build that team and enjoy that. Uh, without the people, um, you are an island and no one wants to be an island. Do you have any advice for students that are looking to pursue in a career similar to your field? Sure. So um, a lot of people tend to focus on the STEM, right? The science, technology, engineering, and math. Sure. But I would say, you know, it's not necessary to confine yourself uh, to these particular fields of study. Um, myself, I'm a pilot. I went through flight school. I did not think that I would work at NASA. <laughs> But little, little known to me at the time, I was learning all about operations, um, you know, processes that need to be followed for safety of life applications. And so that learning experience translated into some work activities that eventually led me first to United Airlines and then to Department of Transportation and then finally to NASA. And I think, um, it was a natural progression. I um, have enjoyed every step of the way. And so I would say, um, whatever your field is, if you have that passion to go work for a space agency, um, beyond the government, of course, now we have the emerging commercial sector. So you, you really have a lot of choices at this point in time. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. It's been such an honor and pleasure and I really hope that everyone who's watching this has learned so much from this interview. Thank you so much also.